you. Let's turn our Bibles to John, John chapter 17 and verse 17. So we're going to look at one verse today. John 17, 17. The title of the message is, How Much Do You Really Love the Truth? How much do you really love the truth? John 17, 17. The Bible says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Brother Kelvin, can you please pray for the message? Uh, dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Lord, I just uh, thank you for today that we get to come here and listen to the preaching, listen to your word. Uh, Lord, at this time I just pray that you give us wisdom, fill us with the Holy Spirit, that we may understand your teaching, your words, Lord. Um, please continue to use this church as salt and light of this world. Amen. Protect our YouTube ministry. Um, Lord, I also want to pray for Sister Helen's back. who herniated this. Lord, please have mercy on her. Please, Lord, if you willing, please heal Sister Helen and help her with her pain. And uh, we pray for a speedy recovery, Lord. And please continue to watch over pastor and pastor's wife's family. Yes. Uh, protect them spiritually and physically, Lord. Amen. And protect them from devil's attacks. Amen. Um, Lord, I just pray that this, at this time you fill the pastor with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Speak through him to us, directly to our hearts. Help us to change from the inside out, Lord. Amen. May yes. he preach with liberty, authority, and freedom, Lord. And may your gospel be preached to the ends of this world. And may the people listening online um, have their minds changed and soul saved, Lord. Yes. And they soften their hearts, Lord. This is the this is the time to get saved. Today is the day of salvation, yes. Lord. And please, let them wait no longer. And Lord, I just pray that you bless the rest of the day. And bless the sermon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 How much do you really love the truth? I hope and believe that you are here because you love the truth. And according to the Bible verse that we just read, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. According to the Word of God, Word of God is the truth. Yes. And we also know that Jesus Christ is the truth, according to John 14, 6. Yes. And when you love the truth, there's a chance that you can get saved. Yes. When you love the truth, God opens the door for you. Amen. We get many questions where, what about those people who never heard the gospel? What about those people who's in the middle of Amazon jungles out there? who does not know any other civilization out there? How can they be saved? If they love the truth, yeah. they follow their conscience, God's going to send them yes. the truth, Amen. which is Lord Jesus Christ, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about that. Right. God made it fair so that no one will ever have excuse when it comes to accepting the truth, Amen. which is Lord Jesus Christ and the word of God. How much do you really love the truth today? People, when they're faced with accepting the truth or not accepting the truth, many times they accept whichever is more convenient to them. If truth will harm them, they'll say no. If truth will expose them, they'll say no. How many times have you seen in the news this day and age when some politicians, some celebrity, anybody who are exposed of their truth they just deny it because it will harm their reputation because it will show the true reality of who they are. You know, we have a lot of dating apps out there, right? I'm not sure if any people will use it, you know, in our church or outside. Hopefully not. You know, I mean, I guess if you have nobody here, you know, you could try to meet a safe person. But do you think that's the real truth? No. Do you think those pictures are the truth? You hear so many horror stories, right? You know, not just those, any other places. You're like, yeah, you know, that's how I look like. And then you really meet the person. That's not the truth. Yeah. They either copy someone else's or they have the face from their 20 years ago or even 30 years ago. How much do you really love the truth? When you're put in that situation, you can't handle the truth. I'm like, oh, man, I, I, I was so excited to meet that person. But when you really saw the truth, you were depressed, you were disappointed, and all those things happen. 
But when it comes to the word of God, you never have to worry about that. You never have to worry about, you know, meeting someone who's lying about their faith, age, you know, figures or anything. Word of God is true in itself. When you're put in a situation, when you are going through the hard times, when you're going through the trials in life, where do you go for the truth? Do you go to Fox News? You conservatives out there. Do you go to CNN, liberals out there, and your local other, you know, media? Where do you go for truth? You have to go to the Word of God. Amen. You have to stick to the Word of God. And you have to cling on to the Word of God. Because without the truth, you and I have nowhere to go. The only reason you and I could stand here, the only reason you and I could stand in front of God and say that, you know what, no matter what happens, God, I'm going to heaven. He'll say, why? You know, because you said so in your word. Amen. You know, the, when parents, they tell kids to do one thing and they don't do it. And when the kid says, you didn't do it either. And if that's the truth, it's really hard to respond back to them, right? Because you're accountable. You're like, you know, daddy tells, don't eat that cookie, right? And then you see your daddy, you know, when mommy said, don't eat it either, you know, honey, in front of the kids, everybody. But you eat it right in front of them. And then mommy goes, hey, hey, Johnny, you know you're not supposed to eat it. You're like, I know, but daddy ate it. You know? And daddy can't say, you know what, I didn't eat it. Because Johnny saw the daddy eat it, right? When it comes to the truth, you have to understand that if I don't love the Word of God like I should, then I don't love the truth. Simple as that. Don't come out and say that I love the truth, you know, I stand for the Word of God, when you haven't even read the Word of God in the last couple of days, last one week, mm. when you haven't studied the Word of God. Don't say you love something when you don't spend time with it. Too many people think that I love something and you think it's just like that. Because when you are put in a situation, for example, if you don't love the Word of God, you, you haven't spent the time in the Word of God, if you haven't meditated in the Word of God, when the things of the world comes your way, guarantee you, you're going to choose things of the world instead of the Word of God. Because you haven't spent time with the Word of God because your heart is not in the Word of God. Right. Let's turn our Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 11. Deuteronomy chapter 11. I mean, Sermon is supposed to be practical. It's supposed to change your heart and behavior. Yes. We're not talking about anything deep when it comes to doctrine. You know, that's for doctrinal studies. That's why we have Bible studies. When it comes to sermons, you have to open your heart. And you have to be willing to change some part of your life. That's making you struggle Amen. when it comes to being a good Christian, yes. when it comes to being a good exemplary yes. Christian to other people. And number one thing, when it comes to having right relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 18. The Bible says, Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may, they may be as frontless between your eyes. I mean, it's the word of God in your heart. Has it been to the point where you bind them in your heart? Are they even the frontless between your eyes, right? Literally, you know, everything you see is like you're not, it's not even your vision anymore. Right. It's through the lens of the word of God. Amen. It's like literally through the thing. I'm, I'm sure you guys seen those, you know, three eye creatures, you know, people yeah. draw. I mean, I don't doubt if they existed in the back in the day or even somewhere right now, right? right? Imagine your two eyes goes, okay, let's go after that lustful things. But the middle eye goes, no, you know, <laughs> you can't. Yeah. That's sin, yeah. right? If you had that check and balance the whole time, wherever you go, whatever you see, because our eyes do see many, many things. We do see, our eyes see many things that we shouldn't see. Right. You saw some stuff last week you weren't supposed to see. Yes. Through your phones, through your TV, 
right? Right. You know, many of you. you yeah. know, maybe one out of a million haven't, but because unless you are somewhere out living in the woods, you know, you're the nature person and then you don't, you cut yourself and you're off the grid, you're going to see stuff. If you're driving, you're going to see stuff on billboards, on the highway. Right. A lot of times we get stuff, yeah. right? But if you have the word of God, right, like frontless between your eyes, it's going to help you. Yes. It's going to have you, help you love the truth more. A lot of times we get questions like, I love the truth. I want to love the truth. What is the truth? We say the word of God. But you can't stop there. You have to understand only the King James Bible is the truth. Amen. Amen. Because there's always uh, things that you have to be wary of. If someone comes up to you and say, you know, I love the truth, but they have the New Living Translation. I love the truth. They have a New King James. I love the truth. They have Revised Version. I love the truth. And they have NIV. They're loving something that's like a rotten apple. Yes. Right? It looks good outside, but once you bite on it, it's rotten. But the worst part about people who does not love truth is that after they bitten that spoiled apple, they don't seek a fresh one or the real one. They just continue to eat it. What happens when people eat rotten stuff? They're going to get sick. Yes. So all those people using the wrong Bible, whether you know it or not, you're sick somehow. Yes. I mean, your excuse is that, oh, yeah, you know, I, 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 I could get saved. Anybody can save if you believe Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Amen. However, those rotten apples make it unclear many times. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. They don't know how to divide the word of God. No. They deny the deity of Jesus Christ. Wow. They don't even believe in the word of God 100% yeah. many times. But you say, oh, those are good. They're the truth. You know, you're full of yourself. Amen. Not all Bibles are, the, are not the same. I mean, did I say it right? You know, not all Bibles are not the same. They are not. Just like you and I are not the same. Right. If New King James Bible supposedly is supposed to be the better updated version of King James Bible, has thousands of verses the words are changed and meanings have changed, they're not the same. Mm -hmm. That's right. How can they be same? Right? Yeah. I mean, those Bible scholars and critics, you don't love the truth. You just want the, what, were they, what was it? Harper Collins publisher, the big one. We just want to sell more Bibles. That's it. Oh, yeah, you know, old King James is good. But in order to really understand the new language, by New King James, by Revised Version, New Revised Version, third times the Revised Version, by the NASB, the by New Living Translation. I'm sure there's second version, New Living Translation, you know, Bibles for, you know, mommy and daddy, you know, hardworking people, you know, changing everything. What's the purpose? As the love of the money is root of all evil, they just want to sell more stuff at the end of the day yes. so that their bellies can get grow and grow and grow. Yes. But who's working behind the scenes? It's the devil. Amen. Using love of money, using these people to deny the truth, people get blinded. Yes. And people follow blind leaders like blind sheep, and then they fall down the cliff and go straight down to hell. But at the end of the day, who are you going to blame? Lord, you shouldn't have put that person in my life. Hey, you know what? It's harder in that case. But you think God will not give you any chance to get out of it if you're in something false, in a false religion, you know, believing in false doctrine? No, God, even people who's listening to this right now who's here, if you had any doubts, you know, God's letting you know. Yes. God's letting you know that there is a truth. The real truth. It's up to you to really love that truth or not. You know, you don't really love the truth if you have more than one truth. I mean, it's like this. People is married here, right? Amen. 
Your wife or your husband is your true love. That's it. I mean, nothing else, yes. right? If there's something else, you and I have to have a talk, oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, either you listen to the word of God or you get disciplined and you get kicked out of the church, <laughs> you know, if you want to keep that lifestyle. So there's truth, right? Are you going to line up your wife and other people? Like, ah, you know what? Today, my truth is that person, you know? Tomorrow, my truth is that person, right? Ridiculous, you know, idiots out there living in an open relationship. What good, what is that, right? You're just, you know, framing your fornicating lifestyle, being a whoremonger Amen. with just the fancy words out there, yes. right? If you know for sure that if you're married, you just have one wife and one husband, there's no husband, husband, and wife, wife, and anything in between. Amen. That's against the word of God. Yes. Then you truly love that person only, and you should. Yes. So when it comes to the word of God, you're going to see so many versions out there. So before late 1800, there was only like King James Bible and Catholic Bible, yes. literally. But, you know, there's devils going to, in the last time, deceive as many people yes. so that he'll take as many people to hell with him. Yes. Then, those of you, if you're just using King James Bible because it's just the best version out there, you don't truly love the Word of God. Because if someone were to ask you, because it's very sad to see so many young men or new Christians who get saved, who's gung-ho, who love the Word of God, who just got saved, who wants to serve God, and they go into these wrong Bible colleges out there. And their professors, their dean, and the pastor of that church or the college tells you, yeah, only original is the perfect word of God. The rest of them are like all translations, you know. Just like King James is the best version out there, you know. Then what is truth? Right. I mean, if this is not the perfect word of God, then I don't believe in the perfect truth. Yeah, they don't good. believe in perfect truth, and they proclaim their faith in that, huh. which makes them hypocrites. Amen. They don't believe in perfect God who can preserve his word. Right. If you have 100% conviction and faith that what you have is the perfect word of God, then you could really love the truth. Yes. When you don't, you can't. If you have any doubts in your heart, can you put your 100%? No. You can. For example, some of your friends, okay, you're going, your body's not doing good. And then someone, they do a testing with a new medication. And nine out of 10 people got healed. And the one person didn't because they didn't believe in the medication, right? And they go, hey, how come I didn't get ill, you know? Because you didn't believe in it. You were supposed to take it every single day, but you only took it once in a while. Other people, they put 100% faith in it. They drink it every day for three weeks. Yes. You did like once here, twice there. So instead of doing it 21 times, you only did it like four or five times. What do you expect? Yeah. You don't love it. You don't believe it. <clears throat> and you're not healed because of you. Don't blame the medication. Amen. As a Bible believer, a lot of times you're in trouble because you don't really love the truth. If you really love something, you're going to go to it regularly. Yes. You're going to talk to it regularly. You're going to think about it on a regular basis. If there are any issues in life, you're going to go to it. Amen. I mean, of course, there's uh, pastors, other brothers and sisters in Christ who might have you know, more experience than you, who could give you some counsel here and there. But a lot of things are straight up, yes or no. Very clear in the Word of God. Right? Yes. I mean, people would ask, hey, Am I supposed to look at that? <laughs> I'm going to 
seriously. You know, am I supposed to look at that? Like, for example, I'm watching a basketball game, and then there's a bunch of commercials out there, and, and a lot of wicked stuff is being commercialized, right? Absolutely. Right, a lot of wicked stuff. You yes. Know? Like they're, you know, doing commercials for marijuana, alcohol, you know, cigarettes, you know, gambling, and wicked stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you say, uh, you know, Pastor, can I just look at that? What does the Bible say? Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil. Amen. Then don't look at it. Yes. What do you even ask? Right? right? You ask because you don't really love the truth. Woo! You ask because you want to hear someone say it's okay. Right. You want to hear someone say who's goals against the word of God. You and I, our final authority have to be the word of God no matter what. That's it. That's how you really love the truth. Amen. That's how you can measure it. When you are put in a place to answer a question, and your question, your answer is based on your final authority, it shows how you really love the truth. Yes. You're put in a hard place, right? If someone comes up to you and says, okay, we might go to that place one of these days, right? If you say anything against homosexuality, you're fire. Yeah. What are we going to do? Right. Obviously, in America, we have our own rights. Yes. If you, you could stand up for trans and homosexuals, I can stand up for straight people. I can yes, stand up right. for godly ways. Amen. Right? So I'm going to stand up for what's right. Yes. I mean, if you're going to fire me for that reason, go ahead. You know, I'll sue you or something. Yes. Lend up, you know, <laughs> according to the employment laws. Okay, we have a lawyer over there. I'll <laughs> consult with him, right? <laughs> but when those things truly come your way, when you're put in a place, right. there is no like, oh, God, give me wisdom to do this, right? Of course, he's going to give you, provide all your need. That's what the Bible says. Yes. No matter what. But when that test comes in your life, you could only work for us if you publicly tell everybody that it's okay, going against your belief. What are you going to do? Right. Is money more important to you? Don't you think God could provide your needs no matter what? Yes. What, how are you going to look at us? Do you think they're going to look, look you at They already know that you're a Christian. They already know that what you stand for. And then you might have given them and share some gospels as well. Mm -hmm. But when you're put in that situation, many eyes are looking at you. Yes. They want to see how much you really love the truth. Right. But when you go, yeah, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. You know, you know it's a different interpretation. You know, right? It's okay. And, you know, Jesus is love. You know, he loves everybody. Uh -huh. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what I meant is like Old Testament days, you know, even though I mean, Romans clearly says it in the New Testament, like, yeah, yeah, yeah Old Testament days, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they see you, they see that you're a fool, hypocrite, yes. weak sauce, everything, yes. right? Yes. And they say, ah, you know, he doesn't really love the truth. You know, we weren't going to fire him, it's against the law. You know, you know, and we're not going to do anything. You know, we just wanted to see if he really loved the truth. Yes. And then, whoa, afterwards, you become a laughing stock everywhere. Yes. And then you yourself lost all the power to preach the gospel. Amen. You lost your testimony like that. However, if your final authority is the word of God, if you really love the truth, it's not going to waver. Amen. Yes. You know what? You know. I don't know about what the employment policy, whatever the policy is. Personally, I'm against it because it's against the word of God. Amen. You know, that's it. And they'll be like, okay, respect your opinion. <coughs> Simple as that. I mean, that's just a one example in your life, right? But there's got to be more things that come your way, yes. right? Young people, for example, your parents are like, hey. I found a great mate for you, an unsaved, professional with a lot of money, right? Ignoring the word of God, being not unequally yoked together right. with unbelievers. Yes. 
you could just be simple answer, right? You just say, you know what? No. <laughs> I'm not going to get together with, you know, unsaved person. Okay. I mean, I, you know what? If that person does get saved, that's a different story. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, you witness to him and they get saved. Hey, it's fine, right? You're not going to marry a person who wasn't saved, you know, when you met them, who wasn't saved when you met them, but got saved later. That's extreme hyper people, you know. Like, don't even meet people who's not even saved, right? I don't know. I mean, you could witness to them if they get saved, God blesses it. Hey, you know, nothing wrong with it. Yeah. But you know for sure right now when they say, okay, we set up a date, you know. You got to get married next month. And the person doesn't get saved. He rejects the word of God, right? He's like, every religion's okay. Buddhism's okay, you know. You know, Islam's okay. Catholicism, everything's okay. We just, you know, love one another and do good to one another. Have peace on earth, you know. Goodwill to every man and woman. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I'll just go that route. Okay, mom. Okay, dad. I'm going to listen to you. What was your final authority? Right. Your mommy and your daddy was your final authority. Mm-hmm. Do you really love the truth? You don't. You really love your mom and daddy's opinions and their thoughts. And it could be your grandma, grandpa. It could be your best friends, you know, BFF, whoever it is. Yes. But if you really love the truth, your answer would have been according to the word of God. I can't. Mm-hmm. Nope. You know, try to set me up with the next person who's saved, you know. Yes. And then preferably Bible-believing, <laughs> KJV only, dispensationalist, you know, grew up in a local church, you know, that person, right? Amen. You know? yes. if, if not, oh, well, mom, daddy, I don't know how much you love me. You know how much you want me to not suffer, you know, with all that money in the world, which God could just take it away just like that. Yes. Can you imagine from the perspective of your parents? You let your son, and you, you, you know, hooked up your son or daughter. You match them with someone who's really wealthy. But, you know, we see all this economic turmoils out there. Yeah. You know, they lose everything. Right. Banks go bankrupt, right? And they were like high executive at a bank. They lose everything, you know. And what are you going to do? You know, they're, they have to live out on the street almost, you know. Go to L.A. City Hall, you know, or somewhere. You, because your final authority and Bible wasn't the truth that you loved, you really love, then you ruin your children's life. Just like that. Yes. Always remember, material stuff, God can give and God could take it away. Amen. Simple as that. You just do your best. Yes. And God will provide what you need. I always say it. Don't just sit there. And then sleep with the Bible on your, under your pillow and think that God will provide all your, everything you need. God doesn't work like that either. That, you don't really love the truth because the <laughs> Bible says as a man, you have to provide for your family. That's you have right. to labor. Yes. I mean, human beings have to labor. Amen. Right? Yeah. So if you expect some imaginary you know, million-dollar check to come to your door through your postal mail or something, <laughs> you don't know the truth. You have to do your best, and you have to labor, yes. and God will provide your need just Thank like you. that. That's, that's what the truth says. If you really love the truth, you are not going to look after all these materialistic things. You're not going to be putting that above the Word of God. Okay, another example, right? I know Word of God is very important to me. But I need a new car. My current car is okay. It operates very well. No issues at all. But I have to show off to other people because everybody else is getting a new car, right? So I'm going to just do just one thing. I'm just, I'm just I, I believe everything the Bible says except just one thing, you know. I know that abstain from all appearance. I know that first by my heart, but just one thing, you know. I'm just going to miss church on Sundays, just for six months. 
just for six months. You know, with that six month of work on Sundays, I could get down payment. I don't have to work, but you know what? It's status. I have to, you know, Lord, you understand. You know, for me to witness to other people, I have to be on the same status, you know. All of them drive the same type of car. So if I want to witness them, I have to have the same type of car, you know. It's totally different from, say, when Hudson Taylor went to, you know, China, you know, cutting his hair, doing like that. It's totally different, yes. right? You know, you're assimilated with the cultural stuff. But this is all about just materialism. Right. And then a lot of times, Christians, Bible-believing Christians, they compromise like that. Yes. I'm like, yeah, you know, I know Bible says one thing, but man, just for this time. I mean, I, it's a funny but sad example, right? Yes. Where you go to Las Vegas. You know, you're like, God, I know you're going to provide my knee and our knee. So I'm going to go to the slot machine today. I pray that, you know, three sevens hop out or come out, <laughs> right? I'm going to go to the table, you know, just give me 20 ones, right? You know, nothing lower than 20, you know. And then you're like, because, you know, you said you're going to provide all my need, God. They're, when you hear that, and then you're like, oh, but what about other verses, right? You're just compromising. You're living in sin just to justify it. When you truly, when you really love the truth, you will never compromise. Simple as that. Even if guns at your head, on your head, yeah. pointing at you, you're not going to compromise. You're like, and we have great examples, right? Just go to Fox's Book of Martyrs, people who really love the truth. You're like, can you give me some examples? Go to Fox's Book of Martyrs. Go see people who's keeping their faith in communist countries right now. Everything's so graphic, the way they torture people. I mean, one incident is where they have horses, you know, their limbs were tied to the horses, north, you know, south, east, and west. Well, this wicked people ask this Christian, hey, do you deny Jesus Christ? If you do, we'll give you everything and more. I said, no. They go, giddy up, and then horses go the other way, and then he'd lose all his limbs, just like that. And then you complain, right? And you're like, ah, oh, you know, I need five more cents. Five more dollars, ten more dollars, a hundred more dollars, you know. I need more of this and more of that, you know. When people are keeping their faith just like that. And then, and I feel ashamed, you know, every time I read it. I mean, do I really love the truth like those people? But you'll be sane if you know for sure because you love the Word of God, you meditate in the Word of God, these words are hidden in your heart where you're not going to compromise. Then, then you make the same decision, you know, now, then, or in the future. Because if you look at many of the decisions that you've made in the past week and past month, just think about it. Was it for the love of the truth or was it for your own glory? Was it for the love of truth or was it for your family? Was it for the love of truth or was it for your, like, you know, your comfort? Right? One thing that you have to get rid of is your comfort. If yes. you truly want to love the truth. The Lord wasn't comfortable when he was dying on the cross. No. Shedding his precious blood. And again, if you do your best, it's okay. Right? And I don't want any cases where like you're about to die and then you come to church and you stop blaming the church. Oh man, the pastor says no matter what you have to come to church. I never said that, right? <laughs> you know. When you can do it, you do it. Yes. Right? If you're like, yeah, you know, when I'm tired, if I have to go to a ball game, I'm gonna go no matter what. But when I'm tired, 
I can't go to church no matter what. You know, when I'm, even though I'm tired, I'm going to go have dinner with my friends. But when I'm tired, I can't go to church. I work too long. My body is tired. But I got to go meet this girl or meet this guy. But, you know, I can't go to church. I'm too tired. Then that just tells you if you really love the truth or not. Yes. Right? If your tiredness constantly stops you from having right relationship with the Word of God, then you don't really love the truth. You love your tiredness. You love being tired because you don't have to love the truth. There are a lot of people out there like that. They work themselves to death. Again, you have to, you know, 40 hours a week at least, right, full time. Just do your best. You have to work, yes. right? But you say, I'm going to work 60 hours a week, you know, to fulfill my luxurious life or to add to my luxury in my life. And then you're like, you know what? I cannot do things of God because I just have to work and work and work. Bunch of excuses. You don't love the truth. Just be honest about it. Yeah, just say, you know what? You know, at this point, you could take some actions now. Now, when you, you know, look back at your life, man, did I really love the truth like I should? Was the word of God my final authority no matter what? Was I a hypocrite? You know, I just said it, but I never did it with my actions, right? Right. Did I compromise many, many times? You know what? I got to repent, confess my sins according to 1 John 1, 9. Now I have to get right with the Lord. Yes. I said, that's the next step you could do. If you hurt and then if Holy Spirit convicted you, and he does, and then you've been convicted, it's up to you to make that choice now. Amen. You have to make that, you know, decision. I can't do it for you. God can't do it for you. Presbyterian church can't do it for you. <laughs> you have to do it. Amen. You have to make a decision now that, you know what? No matter what happens, I will not compromise. No matter what happens, I'm going to really love the truth. Amen. No matter what happens, this is going to guide me. Yes. Wherever I go. Thank you, Lord. If you have made that choice, then next step is what? You actually have to know more about it. Yes. You have to study to show thyself approved to God. Yes. Right? 2 Timothy 2.15, you actually have to now know a little bit more so that you'll compromise less. Amen. The more you know, the less you will compromise. Yes. People always say, you know what? How come, even though I believe it with all my heart, you know, I, I still struggle so much? Because you don't study the Word of God. You're still not obeying God's command. You have to keep this Word in your heart on a daily basis. Over and over and over. Yeah. You have to read and you have to study. Don't just study only, right? No, I don't want people to get into this trap that devil has put in place, too. You're so caught up with just certain verses and certain topics that you ignore the whole Bible. Right. You, you have to go to Revelation only. You, know? you have to only talk about and then study about the end times, right? That truth you really love. Man, but when it comes to Old Testament, the laws, you know, the genealogy and all that stuff, you're like, oh, man, that's boring to me. No. no. <laughs> Everything is the Word of God. Amen. Everything. Yes. That's how you have to read from Genesis to Revelation. Yes, sir. That's how you have to meditate the whole Word of God. And as you study afterwards, rightly dividing the Word of Truth, you understand a lot better. Because some of you... If you really love something, you know that person from A to Z, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're spending more and more and more and more and more time with that person. I mean, yeah, right? You know, married people. If you spend less and less and less with that person, you don't know that person. Right. So when that person 
says, what's my favorite color? You don't even know. What's my favorite food? You don't even know. What's my favorite place to go? You don't even know, uh, right? Because you never really, really love that person. A lot of times relationship is just lustful things, right? Yes. You just attract it physically and that's it. That's not, that's not true love. True love is sacrifice. Getting to know each other and love each other's, you know, infirmities, you know, covering and loving as time passes by deeper and deeper. Amen. But then that begs the question. I mean, do you really love your spouse? You may ask yourself. Because some people just get married because of, you know, carnal reasons or for business reasons. We see that a lot. But godly reason, right? Do you love that person like your other half? You can't do that unless you really, truly love the Word of God. You have wrong foundation. If you can't even truly love the truth, how are you ever going to truly love everything else? It's like the foundation is wrong. It's that house built on the sand. Yes. You put the Word of God on top instead of being a foundation. You have people. You have a career. You have everything else. Mm-hmm. So it's keep on, and they're going to disappoint you. And they're not perfect. It's keep on sinking and sinking after you lose everything and you come to the Word of God. Because it was on top, yes. right? And then you, like, complain to God. No way to complain to God at that time. Just get on your knees and say you're sorry. You know, repent and get right with Amen. the Lord. That's all you got to do. So in conclusion, where are you standing when it comes to the truth? If it's house built, is it on a firm foundation right now? Or is it on a quicksand, right? Is it sinking, albeit slowly? For some of you, this quicksand is fast one. Yeah. And it's going fast and fast. And before you know it, you'll be destroyed as a Christian because you really didn't love the truth. You did not have Bible as a final authority. You follow the world, the devil, and your flesh as your final authority. Whom you truly love more than the truth. Then your end is what? Just like that house built on quicksand, it will eventually disappear. Yes. And at the judgment seat of Christ, if you're saved, everything that you've ever done for the Lord will just burn up. Amen. But... Thank God that you and I have opportunity to get right, examine, and truly reflect how much did I really love the truth? How much do I really love the truth? How much will I really, truly love the truth? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you have given us the perfect word of God, the truth. Your word says, these words will sanctify us. However, because we don't put these words in our heart and we don't think of it as our final authority and because we don't truly, really love the truth, we live a life that's contrary to the truth. We constantly compromise, we fall into temptations, over and over, Lord. I pray that this will be the day where we really get right, confessing our sins and our ways, Lord God, get right with you. No matter what comes our way, Lord, putting your truth as our final authority, never compromising, and showing how much we truly love the truth, Lord. Lord God, you know what many people are going through and their needs are, Lord. Provide them according to your needs, Lord. And bless the rest of the day. And number one prayer, Lord. Even so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.